Thanks, darling. And uh, hello, everyone, once again. I've just moved my chat box out of the way. There we go. Right, just getting a, a feel for what's going on. Am I very soft? No. no, not normally very soft. Try and turn the volume up a bit. Is that better? No. Hopefully, every, hopefully you can all hear me. And I'm not blasting your ears too much. Um, I should move that out of the way. There we go. Right, I've actually started with, I've got uh, oil up here. Um, partly because I've been following the CAD yen since uh, about six o'clock when we were up at the screens. Uh, top line is I've got the three minute, the five minute, and the 10 minute, and down at the bottom I've got the uh, the 15 minute, 30 minute here, and right over here on the daily chart bottom right. And just wanted to highlight it purely because uh, this is part of the reason that we've seen the move in commodity currencies, particularly the Canadian dollar. Uh, which moved up nicely, but what it also uh, gives a, a, a nice. Actually, I'm going to turn my volume down a bit. Sorry, it's a bit loud in my headset. There we go. That's a bit better. Uh, what it also demonstrates is the power of volume price analysis, understanding of related markets, because what we've seen, and I'll switch over onto the multiple CSIs as well, but you'll see there the commodity currencies were roaring up about half an hour ago, really strong moves. Um, and then they've come to a pause point are actually starting to roll over. In fact, the Aussie is, is already on the way down pretty strongly. But what this also signifies, you can see here we had the move higher, lots of volume driven in, and then we get this big, big move at the top here. We've had the volatility trigger as well, so we're expecting there's a ton of selling going on in here. And we've also got the volatility triggered as well, so it's no great surprise to see the market now shifting sideways. More weakness coming in on this candle, effort to rally. Lots of volume driven in. You know, this market's weak. We're now expecting congestion around this point. We may even get a full blown reversal. It's not developing at the moment, but that may well come in due course. So it's just a, 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 another way of looking at the related markets, of understanding the relationships, of understanding why a currency or a currency pair is behaving in the way it is. And it also gives you a completely different perspective. When you look at related markets, you'll see other things in terms of obviously the volume price. A relationship that exists on those charts and which will help you to make decisions based on your currency pairs. In terms of where we are on the daily, uh, oil, as Anna said, is pretty damn cheap now, and there will be a lot of uh, buyers moving in. Don't know where it's all going to be stored in tankers, goodness knows where, but certainly as far as the Chinese, they'll be buying up and expect to see more. So maybe this is now bottoming out around the $20 per barrel region. Should see some more buying coming in. I mean, it may go lower, or it could potentially go even lower still. Um, but we will see what develops on that particular front. Um, just pull over this screen here on my right-hand side. Let's pull that over for you. There you go. Uh, this is the FTSE. Um, if you were in the room last night, uh, we had uh, terrific trading on the uh, indices, the U.S. indices. They were just falling out of bed, and it was pretty straightforward trading. Uh, on across the Renko's uh, tick charts and time-based charts as well. It's a great blend of, blended way of using non-time and time-based charts together. This is the FTSE 100. It's open gapped up this morning. It's now in congestion, but it's certainly uh, there's a little bit of positivity around. Just pull up the, uh, there we go. Go away. I want to see that. There we are. This is uh, the VIX. Uh, this is on the daily. You can see here that was the yesterday, pretty strong uh, in a in a relatively tight range there. Um, we're just sort of trading sideways at the moment, so that's really the reason for the congestion. VIX isn't doing a huge amount at the moment, and in terms of the U.S. indices, just to quickly head over there, and then I'll go back onto the currency charts. There we go. All pretty much the same. Pop that up full size. That was a big move yesterday. And whilst that may not look a significant move, it's, as I said last night, it's because it's distorted by these massive moves that we've had here. These candles, uh, we're talking about 2,000 uh, odd, odd points here. Uh, these are monster moves. And what it does is it tends to, uh, when you look at or when you glance at the chart, you think, well, this isn't uh, very significant. But that's, you know, we're getting on for 1,000 points yesterday. And that's abnormal in normal trading conditions. You would expect to see two, 300 point ranges, something like that, 400 maybe. But these are massive moves. 
So all of this is just distorting the whole business of, of in some ways of chart reading and you just have to remember the whole time what we're looking at in terms of these massive moves in terms of, of equities certainly at any rate. So what we're seeing at the moment, the market's trying to tick up, a little bit of buying coming in here to support the move, a bit more here. These are all the three, this is the YM, the NQ and the ES, which is the futures contract for the Dow, the uh, NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. So quickly over onto the currency strength, multiple time frames, let's see what's going on, just to confirm what I was saying earlier on. Uh, this was a very strong move we saw in the Canadian and all the commodity currencies indeed were all rising nicely. We had the New Zealand, the Aussie and the Canadian. Now we're starting to see some strong selling coming into the market, certainly in terms of the Aussie, the blue line. Aussie's rolling over here, Aussie's rolling over here. This is on 3, 5, 10 and 15. So it's, uh, you know, for someone like myself, I always look at the extremes. I'm always looking up at these regions or down here really spoiled for choice cad setting up for reversal on uh, slower time frames as is new zealand aussie's already started down at the bottom you've really spoiled for choice you've got the the dollar already moving up strongly you can see it here across the time frames this red line on five on ten starting to move on 15 same with the swiss franc the euro looks pretty beaten down right now but at some point it'll it'll rise uh, lazarus like from the from the floor and uh, we've got some strong buying of the pound going on right now on uh, across the time frames kicking up here hasn't actually moved here so there's plenty of opportunity plenty of stuff to to search out uh let's just go onto the charts i think i've got the uh, switched over to the aussie dollar there i can't remember now where are we there we go um yeah just uh, i moved that over onto the aussie dollar just to to see that developing and again it's picking up the signals as Anna said, you know, we're moving into London Open. Just, just widen that up a bit. There we go. Lots of volume driven in here. Nice volatility trigger on the candle. What are we expecting? Well, at the very least, congestion. And what we're seeing now is actually reversal in sentiment. Uh, and it's no great surprise. You'll see this all the time at the London crossover session. Uh, there's trap moves, constant trap moves, some on low volume, some on high volume. Some are obvious, some are less obvious. But you're always expecting something to happen even if it is just a question of volatility as the market gets underway even if there are no trap moves but it's such a profitable time for the market makers i can't tell you this is up on five similar sort of picture we had the volatility trigger carried on a little bit further absolute ton of volume going into this candle again you know it gives you a signal that this is selling there's heavy selling going on in here the the, the market makers are selling into into weakness they're dumping out here and there's going to be some sort of reversal some sort of pullback it's inevitable based on that sort of volume and what's interesting about this uh, if you look at it this is seven o'clock this is europe this is eight o'clock london now under normal circumstances you would expect this volume here to be substantially higher than this volume here so this is telling you this is absolutely huge amount of selling going on in this candle and therefore expecting the market to reverse, which is exactly what it's doing right now. You can see the trend monitor, it's in the transitional phase. We've come out of the bullish, we've gone into the transitional colors. And if that reverts into full-blown uh, reversal from primary to primary, then that will change through to red. It's already gone through, this is 15 seconds, so this is pretty quick. This is on three minutes. And over there we are over on the five minute, no change on the 15 minute. But exactly the same uh, picture there, ton of volume driven in. And we're not seeing such heavy volume in the London session as we get underway in that uh, in that move lower. Can I pass back to you, darling? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Just going to pass back to Anna.